As for the box office battle between those human dinosaurs, Schwarzenegger and Stallone, old Sly, who's been fading fast of late, has unexpectedly come out the winner. His dumb but dauntless starring role in the mountain adventure story Cliffhanger having helped it take £8 million in this country. Mind you, the breathtaking aerial stunts were even more impressive than the monosyllabic muscle man, and it's pleasing to record that they were choreographed by the British company Flying Pictures. Here then is our report on the way all that tricky stuff was done. I started uh, work on the film in November 1991, which was really uh, initially budgeting it, um, going to the scouting locations to work out where they're going to go and what we're going to need to do. And they'd look at certain pinnacles of rock and say, can we land there? Or can we put stunt doubles on there or whatever? And we'd work out the logistics necessary and what all that's going to cost. And then it's going out there and helping them build the sets in the mountains, getting construction crews up there and back and carrying all the materials and equipment and generators and lights and stuff like that. Okay, where are you? I'm just hanging out, Jess. The shot uh, at the beginning of the film when Stallone was climbing up to rescue the girl, they started, they had a very tight shot of Stallone, which is done in the studio with the rock all painted um, nicely, and he turns away, and at the same time, the action helicopter descends in between the camera helicopter and the cliff face and wipes frame to the climbing double on the, on the side of the mountain. The tolerances there are quite tight, but we're, we, we take a lot of care to make sure that, to minimize all the risk. But by far the most dramatic stunt was the air-to-air -air transfer at 14,000 feet. The stunt sequence itself was uh, unique in that it had never been done before or attempted before. So we had a lot of preparation, planning, tests, hidden parachutes to design and, and test as well. Uh, it just took a hell of a long time. We just had various problems inherent with it, in that the temperature was one thing. We were expecting temperatures, wind chill factor of minus 60 to minus 90. So we had to test and prepare clothing that could actually cope with those temperatures. And then the other problem was the actual speed, which when we did the transfer was 150 miles an hour. And uh, it was just so exhausting being out the back there you literally couldn't bring your hand backwards if you actually let go from where you were holding, although I was attached you know, via a quick release system. If I actually brought my hands backwards or let them go, it's very difficult to actually strain to, to, to get back there. The safety measures we had were fairly numerous in that um, whenever I went out the back of the aeroplane, I always had, sa I had four safety parachutists, one in the back with me, uh, two in a chase plane, one in the Jetstar, and we also had a chase helicopter that had the paramedics on board uh, if anything did go wrong. He's hurt bad. What should we do with him? Get him to a hospital. Fast. The secret is keep a cool head and just think of the things that can go wrong. Why do filmmakers make life so difficult for themselves? I suppose they're just big kids at heart. 